My name's Rosa Josie, and I will be directing Henry V in the 2018 season. Shakespeare's my great love. I am super passionate about directing Shakespeare, and I've directed maybe a dozen, ten, eight to 12 Shakespeare plays, um, including, of the history plays I've done, King John, Richard II, um, Henry the Sixth in an adaptation, um, and I've also I, I've tended to do some of the more obscure plays like King John, like Titus Andronicus, but I've also done Midsummer Night's Dream, Twelfth Night, Hamlet, um, I'm Tem the Tempest, Much Ado About Nothing. Um, so I've I've done a, a range, but lately I've been doing quite a few history plays especially. Um, and I also do all, um, my, what I've started doing recently and I've become incredibly passionate about is all-female Shakespeare. So I have a company called Upstart Crow Collective and we're dedicated to doing classical works with all-female casts and King John, Titus Andronicus, and we uh, were both all female. And then also, we just recently did an adaptation of all three Henry VI plays called Bring Down the House in two parts. And that was last season at Seattle Shakespeare Company. When I think of the history plays, um, I, I've always started to feel like I wish they weren't called history plays in the canon. Like, you know, how the, you know, it gets these are the romance plays, these are the comedies, these are the history plays, these are the tragedies. And I, I always think that they are political war plays because that's what's going on in them. And because I'm always thinking about how do these, how do these plays relate to a contemporary audience? And especially with the history plays when it is not specifically our history um, as an American audience, um, why do these plays today? What do they have to say to us? How do they resonate for a contemporary audience? And I think the, the way that politics plays out in them and uh, the, the views that they have, the things they tell us about war and countries going to war and leaders taking countries to war um, and the cost of war on us, that I find to be very relevant in a way that um, and a contemporary American audience can really get drawn into the place. And also as a director, I find that if I'm not thinking of how to reenact a historical story on stage, but I'm actually thinking about um, what's going on politically in the play, the strategy, the political strategy, the military strategy, um, then the plays become about intrigue which then, I, you know, I'm a big House of Cards fan, I'm a big uh, Game of Thrones fan, and, and I think about how in, in those works and also in the, the so-called history plays, the personal and the political are always at play and how they, uh, how they affect each other. Personal um, also meaning the the, the personal characters, the, the, the nature of the individual characters, how decisions that are made by individuals impact whole societies. That's what, what fascinates me. Um, I'm also interested in um, how the plays reflect and talk about leadership and the nature of leadership. And um, when we think, you know, we live in a democratic society and we elect our leaders, but those leaders have also do have a lot of power. And the particular personalities of those leaders affect the course of history, affect whether we go to war or not. It's not just the larger political ramifications, it's also the person making that decision. So the character and the nature of leadership, I think, is something that I really want to dig into. I find it's really, compelling in these plays. I think the character of Henry V is fascinating because I think he's so charismatic. I think he's so human. I think uh, he's the kind, 
uh, on the one hand, and I think he's complicated. On the one hand, I think he's the kind of leader I'm just yearning for right now, somebody that I can get behind, somebody who I feel really is trying to do the right thing. Um, and then I watch him and I question whether he's always doing the right thing. And that makes me uh, uneasy in an interesting way that I think that is important for us to come to terms with, or to grapple with, rather, as a contemporary society. Um, what kind of leader are we looking for today? But I think that what's fascinating about the character of Henry V is that he is so complicated, and I don't want to uh, smooth out the rough edges of that character. Uh, because I think I don't want to, this production to answer the question of his character or say this is who he is. Uh, as any great character, I don't think any production can answer that question. I think the point is to be part of the ongoing conversation and to add something to that conversation. I think it's a really amazing thing for an audience to be able to follow a character through three plays with the same actor. I think that's a thrilling sort of meta-theatrical journey for an audience to take. So it's, th it's, it's a thrilling journey that the actors have been able to go on and that they're going to bring so much of what they've learned about these characters working on Henry IV, parts one and two, and I think how rich that will be f uh, to have that resource going into the play. And then also knowing that this play is very different than Henry IV, parts one and two. So we will have to tackle the text that we have and the story that we have to tell. In, in, in some cases, um, it, the characters are on a very different journey in this play. So I'm really looking forward to that challenge. It's exciting to, to work with it. And it's also, you know, um, I better bone up on my Henry the Fourth parts one and two also because my actors are going to know their stuff coming in also. So that's also a great challenge for a director and it keeps you on your toes. I'm a director that loves the theatricality of theater. I love that something, I, I love to make theater that cannot be any other medium. I love to do work that can only be seen on the stage. So for me, what that means is engaging an audience's imagination, um, which means uh, for me working in a more abstract conceptual world visually often. Um, I don't tend to put plays into very specific periods. I tend to uh, work in a created world, a the, you know, a, a world of our imagination. So for Henry V, I'm interested in a world that is both medieval and modern, um, and that the, the space is very bare, at least when the audience comes in, because it is a play that is created, as the chorus says, let us on your imaginary forces work. So I'm hoping to engage the audience, which is actually something that I love to do in the theater, to invite the audience to engage their imagination to complete the visual world of the play, the oral world, the, the world that you see on stage, not, on, not only by, um, so not engaging their um, suspension of disbelief only by presenting the full picture where they can get lost in it, but by actually asking them to actively engage in completing the picture. So I love when a chair can be a mountain or it can be a throne or it can be um, a, a seat on a train or a, a tree, <laughs> whatever it is. I love the transformational, um, the transformation that can only happen on stage with the active engagement of an audience. So um, the spare, the aesthetic for this, it's very spare. There will be some kind of building blocks, and the ensemble will take us to these different worlds. So they will take us to the um, 
court of Henry V, and then the French court, and then they will take us across the sea to Harfleur, and then create Harfleur, the siege of Harfleur, and the battles of Agincourt, and then back to... So we will watch the ensemble visually create that world before us and tear it down and recreate it so that that hopefully will be part of the journey and the excitement for an audience seeing this show.